welcome to this review of my Bull KBU 1971 keyboard. Finally, finally I get to show you Cream Alps. No, not cream dampened ones, but the original non-dampened tactile ones. But not just that, this is a cool look at an early example of an Alps AX keyboard. The AX, or Bigfoot platform, is what the Dell 8101 series grew out of, as well as the SGI Granite keyboard I showed a while ago. It doesn't have a clear date indication on it, but I suspect that this one is a rather early entrant into the series, because it still uses the old 5-pin DIN connector, and its switches are among the earliest in the SKCM series. It's also the heaviest AX keyboard I own, at 1.82 kilos. That's 350 grams more than a Silatech made M90 Dell 8101W. Gulp Bull is a French company from Paris with offices in more than 100 countries. It's active in quite a few industries, but especially so in the defense business, which is obviously why its logo is a green tree. Makes perfect sense. As you might expect from a French company, the keyboard itself uses a French layout, which is easily recognized by saying Azerti ouais ouais mon chou at the top rather than QWERTY. Now, I haven't actually properly covered the Azerti layout in detail yet, so I think it's high time we get down to it. The special function keys are also in French, such as this one, which is short for JEU DE POME. This one means PINOT NOIR. This one is Got de boeuf. This one, pain au chocolat. And this one, omelette du fromage. In fact, and really I only found this out while putting the keycaps back on after I tried to restore it a little bit, as an outsider the French keyboard layout is completely bizarre. Generally I can figure out where most keys go on foreign layouts, but this one is just crazy. So at the top you have Azerti, and Q goes where A goes, and Z is replaced by W. But that's far from all. For example, take this one here, where do you think this one would go? No, that's not a zero, it goes next to zero. Now, how about this one? No, that's not a two, <laughs> that goes where Tilda lives. And how about this one, the one that looks like a sad face? That's left bracket. In fact, that whole area is full of keys where I'd have no idea where to put them if I were unfamiliar with the Azerti layout, including the M key, which is now a mid-row key rather than a bottom row one. It's a real mindfuck if you're not used to it. Furthermore, the numbers work the other way around on the French layout. If you want to type numbers, you need to use the shift key. The default outputs are symbols and letters, which are also strangely laid out. For example, left bracket and right bracket are not next to each other, and neither are E acute and E grave, or these two dashes. I have no idea what the reasoning behind this is, to be honest. I'm sure the Azerti layout is of great benefit to its French-speaking users, but as a foreigner, it's <laughs> baffling, to say the least. The build quality is what you'd expect of an AX keyboard. Excellent, with a pretty tough plastic case, and the metal mounting plate bringing the weight to 1.82 kilos, like I mentioned. Sadly, this has sustained some minor damage, but I'll get back to that in a little bit. The keycaps aren't PBT die subs like those in the SGI and AT101, but ABS double shots with Alps' signature molding marks. They're a rather curious darkish grey with black lettering, which gives them a somewhat sinister appearance. Particularly with the yellowing of the ABS material, it's turned into a slightly brownish colour, which actually I think suits it rather well. Quite a few of them have a slick texture and appearance, indicating that the board is well-loved, as they say, particularly on the numpad, which I guess I can appreciate. ABS wears a lot faster than PBT does, but Double Shots always retain the printing, and these Alps-made ones are seriously delicious for sound. And finally, the switches. So, like I said before, these are not the dampened version, with which they're often confused. These are considerably rarer and much older too. Cream damp switches are one of Alps' later entrants to the series, while SKCM Cream are a first-generation design. For those who know about them, they're easy to separate though, because SKCM Cream aren't as transparent and have a much paler, almost white colour. 
The only official information we have on them comes from this famous picture of a tester that included SKCM Blue and SKCM Cream as its non-clicky but otherwise identically rated counterpart. SKCM Cream are one of the few ALP switches we have the exact part name of. It's SKCM AF, as you can see. Both Blue and Cream are generally found with the older grey switch plates, but they have also been encountered with later white ones. It's not clear what the relation to other SKCM tactile switches is, whether it's succeeded by a black, salmon, or even orange, or whether it was just a standalone, partially because there are no official details known about SKCM orange and salmon, and conflicting reports with regards to their waiting or their introduction dates, I can't make anything sensible out of it. I guess we'd have to wait until somebody found more catalogues. And unfortunately, I can't add a super huge amount to that either, because although I've tried to snag an SKCM AF keyboard in pristine condition for years, I've been unable to succeed at it, as this one is anything but that. The switches are mostly found in a specific version of Next Keyboard, and also in certain models of Canon typewriters, but this one is obviously my preferred choice, as it's a 101 key full-size AT keyboard. Alas, it was pretty dirty when I got it, much worse than I had thought based off of pictures in the listing. In fact, the keyboard appears to have been opened by a previous owner, rather badly I should add, and they have cleaned the mounting plate to make it appear cleaner than it actually was, because while the plate was moderately clean, the switches were full of dust and crud. I wouldn't rate it above 5 out of 10, and although I've done a restoration job on it, I'd be stretching if I said it was 6.5 out of 10 now, not counting the fact that quite a few of the switches are faulty. As such, I can't really comment on the smoothness of these switches very well, but being a first generation design, it should be on par with, for example, SKCM Blue. They were their contemporaries, after all. All I can say for sure is that it's lighter than SKCM Orange and less rough than SKCM Black. It's not my best ever buy this, but hey, you win some, you lose some. Maybe if I do get a pristine SKCM AF keyboard in the future, I'll do a redux. To at least get a little bit of a feel for what the tactility is like, I swapped the click leaves from some blue Alps on this Focus FK555 for cleaned tactile leaves from the Bull. Everything that I've seen so far leads me to believe that apart from the slider color, this was really the only difference between the two switches anyway. Under this caveat that they are essentially reconstructed creams, I can say that the tactility is a little bit snappier than that of SKCM Orange, and I'd go as far as to say that it's actually more tactile than SKCM Blue as well, which surprised me a little bit to be honest. But please take this with a heavy dose of salt. Until I get pristine creams in a keyboard, I wouldn't presume to be able to give a definitive opinion on these, unfortunately. That is it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a tapping demonstration of me tapping on this keyboard.